tomorrow may not bring that same thing that you said last night. Woo! Every time I find a little piece of mind, I hold on tight. Cause tomorrow may not bring the very same thing. No, no, no. Well, hello, Steve. How you doing? Good. And I'll be like, hey, Bill, how's it going, man? How's everything good? Is life good? Life is good, and I thank you. Thank you for asking. Okay, Thanks. Steve, today is kind of a subject that I heard about you through some friends and the advocacy for kidneys and how you've been a spokesman and things. Can you kind of get us going on uh, the background on what happened and how you found out you needed a kidney, where you got the kidney, and then we'll get into the rest of it. Well, Bill, first of all, thanks for the invitation. I'm, I'm definitely honored to be here. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm going to start back in uh, when I was the whole procedure. When I first got sick, it was uh, uh, Christmas of 1995. And um, I had a real bad case of what we thought was the flu. And I went to my doctor, family doctor, who was actually, as you might remember him, Dr. Russell Simpson. And Dr. Simpson said that I had the flu. It was Christmas time, you know, in Colorado, when it's Christmas time. So I said, oh, well, that's probably right. I got the flu. Um, he started me on antibiotics. And Bill, I took these antibiotics. And then, you know, at that time, I was still going to the gym. And went to the gym, man, I couldn't shake it. Could not shake this, this cold or flu, whatever it was. So I went back um, to Dr. Simpson. He said, I still think that's what it is, but let me refer you to me to another doctor. That doctor said the same thing. They jumped up the uh, antibiotics on me. Still didn't work. So I went to a third doctor. And he said the same thing. Now, during this time, Bill, I lost 50 pounds. Wait, wait. Um, 50 pounds. Yes. I mean, it was just, it was tearing me up, man. I had no appetite. Um, the biggest thing was I couldn't pee. That should have been an indication to us. But the bottom line is that after that, I finally, we found a doctor down at Denver Health. What should have been a signal when you couldn't what? I couldn't urinate. I couldn't pee. I thought that's what I heard you say. That's, that's uncomfortable. Well, what it was, you think that because I couldn't urinate, that uh, that would have gave me more weight. But instead, because I couldn't do anything, uh, my body was shutting down on me. That's where I dropped that 50 pounds. It was like, I was in bad shape, Bill. Okay, I'm, tell me about it. Okay, so uh, like I said, we finally got the right doctor who was down at Denver Health. And I would tell anybody, when you're really sick, you go to Denver Health. Denver Health is world renowned. They have the best doctors in the world, trauma doctors. And anyway, this doctor, when we came in, well, it took us two weeks to get the appointment to see him, Bill. Mm -hmm. I didn't you know, raise any fuss about it because I knew he was gonna tell me I had the flu. I we went in and, and they drew some blood work and uh, nurses started coming in and out and the doctor came in and he says to me, he says, uh, why'd you take so long to come in? I could barely hold my head up. I said, well, I just assumed you were going to say I had the, the flu like everybody else. He said, no, you're a total real failure. And I don't wait, know if wait, you're going to... Wait, excuse me. Wait a minute. Okay. You, you are kind of going a little fast. I mean, I'm trying to absorb it. You said you come in thinking that somebody's gonna tell you you had the flu, yeah. and the word you got was what? Total what? Total renal failure. Oh yeah. 
And um, I, I, I was happy because I knew I, that sounds strange, but I was happy because I knew I did not have the flu. I knew in my heart I didn't. My wife started crying and I told her, don't worry about it. You know, we're, now we know what's going on. Well, Bill, they took me straight upstairs. Straight upstairs and started dialysis. They dialyzed me in the hospital. Oh. Yeah, and so I started to feel better. You know, and as time went on, felt better. And about a week later, they set me up with going to a dialysis center. And um, I got on a real regimen of going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 6 to 10 a.m. And that sounds like a lot, and it was a lot, but it kept me alive. Amen. And I did that for about a year and a half. And they gave me information that uh, my veins were collapsing. And I wasn't going to be able to stay on dialysis. I was going to need a transplant. And that's when my brother stepped in and he said, uh, you know, he was a general firefighter and retired from Denver as a firefighter. And um, he said, no, I've come across all kinds of people with one, two, and three kidneys. He said, I'm going to get tested. And so he got tested and thank God we were a match. And um, that was, we had to wait three months, but we got it squared away in January 13, 1999. He gave me a kidney. Praise God. Your brother gave you this kidney. Yes. And this was in 1999. And is this when you started finding out about how many blacks were getting uh, kidney failure? Or how did all this work out? Well, Bill, because during that time from, you know, from the dialysis to the transplant, I had time to do a lot of uh, my own little little investigation. Amen. I'll call it. Amen. And that's how I come to find out all these different things. But um, that still didn't make it easy for me for a transplant. I, I tried to talk my brother, my brother out of it. I really did. Okay, wait a minute. You just <laughs> said that, well, yeah, the doctor told you you need a kidney. I mean, your, land, your, your veins are already collapsed, and we already, you already expressed that. Yeah. So now you get a kidney, and you're trying to tell your brother don't give it to you? Well, let me, let me explain to you that. Please do that. <laughs> No, Bill, um, it's not that I didn't want a kidney. It's that they were going to put me on the kidney transplant list. And when they put you on the list, you can go anywhere from the average person is on the list from five, between five and 10 years. But I told him, I said, hey, I'll wait my turn. I'm going to go on. He said, no, you're not. He said that. And so that's where my advocacy for the living donation came in. Because when you have a living donor, Bill, you don't have to wait. It's a matter of insurance and making sure that you're both you know, um, blood, blood blood type level is, uh, is compatible, and once they get that squared away, they you know, like I said, insurance and blood type level and other things they test you for. But once everything is good, then they go ahead and, and start the process of the transplant. So, in other words, what you're saying is that you were on the list, and someone you knew matched. You don't have to worry about the list if if they could have the money to do it, you could do it. If your insurance will pay for it. And most insurances will pay for it now. Your insurance will pay for it and you're compatible and all this uh, list that they have for you, then you start the process of the transplant. If you're not, if you don't have a living donor, you go on the list bill. And like I said, you can be between five and 10 years. I found out 70% of the people are, you know, are black. I said, I gotta get the word out to let everybody not, not only know that 70% of the people that are waiting bill, but like myself, that you, you can live with one kidney. I was, uh, didn't know it until I got sick and they did an MRI to uh, get some some other blood work. I was born with one kidney. I had a chance to really investigate and I found out about all the African Americans that are on this list that don't need to be because I was living proof and I'm still living proof that I found out I was uh, born with one kidney 44 years later. My brother gave me a kidney and for the last 25 years, Bill, He's been living with one kidney, and I live with his kidney. So one kidney is something that you can definitely live with. Okay. Um, and the testing that they do, Bill, is very rigorous. The Back when we got tested, the main thing was, let's see, if you're blood compatible and you're healthy, let's go. Now they do thorough background checks into the potential donor to make sure that if you have any history of diabetes or any type of a disease, I mean, if you have a if you have high blood pressure or somebody in your family's had high blood pressure they rule you out they're not going to let you know they're looking out for the donor much more 
tough than it did back in my when we first started this 25 years ago. could you explain to the audience because i i think i understand what you're saying if the donor had like hep c or um lupus or the things that you're mentioning you're saying they would not take their kidney well no i'm not saying they wouldn't take their kidney i'm just saying that there's other things they can do but for you specifically if your potential donor has high blood pressure if they're diabetic and they're taking medications for it they're going to rule them out to give you a kidney until those those things are rectified okay and there's a lot of things well you know that bill did you know that there's now a cure for hep c yes i i do okay so see you can you can be eligible as a donor with hep c but once again there's two, the testing that they do to make sure because the last thing they want to do is take potentially your one of your good kidneys and give them to somebody and it doesn't work it doesn't pan out See, they want to make sure that anytime they go through all this surgery and the financial end of it on both the, the, the donor and the recipient end, everything is good. Now, let me back up a little bit, Bill. For the donor, your insurance, you don't have to do anything. If you said you wanted to give me a kidney now, you know, all they would do is start testing you. My insurance and my Medicare and my, my other private insurance takes care of you as far as cost. So they're doing everything possible to try to make donors step forward. But we, as African Americans, you know, we've got a history of uh, back in the day not trusting doctors. So that just shows you how they go all around. There was another a black couple, Bill, that was from Washington, D.C., who I never got a chance to take a picture with them, but I am going to because we've been touching base with each other, and they're special people. So there's, there's a lot of reasons. And, so all I can really tell folks, potential donors, is I tell them, say, hey, look, I was born with one kid, so you can live with one kidney. I'm living proof. And for the last 25 years, I've lived with one, and my brother's lived with one. Well, tell me, sir, you got your kidney in 99. Yes. Could you expand a little on how um, the African Americans versus other groups of people as far as needing kidneys, getting kidneys, um, have you ever been in a situation? Have you been on the waiting list? Well, Bill, it's funny you can say that is because now it was uh, three years ago that my numbers started creeping up. Now, at that time, you know, I've been had my kidney for 22 years, and I got very comfortable in life saying this kidney will last me until I die. And my numbers started creeping up, and we got caught up in the pandemic. And so I had to go back on the list because I had to find another potential living donor. What you're saying is that the kidney that you had gotten received 22 years ago, mm -hmm. the kidney you received 22 years ago is now going back. Yes. And, and um, it's been three years that it's uh, started decline. So that gave me a chance to uh, find to see if I could have another living donor. And uh, jumping ahead of everything, but Bill, I've had five different people that have tried to give me a kidney, and for one reason or another, um, they didn't wouldn't work out. And I have to tell you that three of those people, it was a blessing in disguise because they found out, two found out they had a high blood pressure, and one found out she was diabetic. So that, as far as I was concerned, that was a win. Well, you know, five people willing to give up an organ for you, my brother. That says a lot to me about you. Hey, like you said, people giving organs, that's that's a compliment to you. Well, I appreciate that, Bill. And most of it is because of, like I was saying earlier, my advocacy. I was able to explain to people in depth, you know, about what it would entail. And I tell them it's no easy process, but if you want to do it, I would appreciate it. And I would stress that if it, if it comes out and it works great, if it doesn't, don't feel in any way like it was a, a, a loss, you know, I just feel like it, it wasn't meant to be. And I've got a potential donor now where everything is working out great for us. We're hoping that in the next two or three months, we can set up with a date for a transplant bill. And and um, as you can see, man, I'm positive. I mean, I had, you know, I, if nothing else, I had 22 great years, Bill. I had got to see my, my, I've got four grandkids. I saw everyone, well, I saw four of them born, born, the other one I didn't see, my only granddaughter, her and my, so 
from uh, my daughter were over in, in Italy. He played pro basketball, and she was born over in Italy. But other than that, man, I got to see all my grandkids. And right now, Bill, they know me. They call their papa and talk to him. And, and hey, man, I, I wouldn't have had that if I, my brother would, wasn't able to give me a kidney uh, 22 years ago. You know, there's chances are I, I was on the list and being a strong advocate for Don't Eat Life Colorado. Uh, something might have happened, but my brother didn't let that happen. He, he jumped right in and said, hey, I'm going to give you a kidney, and it all worked out for you. And you have a donor now. Right now, I got one lined up. He's being tested. Yes, sir. And I also heard you speak about the joy and the happiness. And when you speak like that, you know, I'm a believer, you know. And yes. when I hear you speak like that, it's the faith and the hope. That's how I kind of turn it into. You have a real positive attitude. For a person going through what I hear you going through, one time would be devastating, but now you have to go through it two times. Can you really just give me an idea of like when it fell on you, when you realized, like you said, your wife was upset, you, and I know it had to, I mean, I, I don't know, but something inside, you had to grab a hold and brace yourself. What, what were those moments like, sir? Bill, that's interesting you say that, man. I, I told you, man, I I paid attention to some other interviews you've done, and you've done a great job of pulling out what the crux of the deal is. When I first got sick, my daughter had to come to live with me. Uh, her mom had passed away, and she was she was 11 years old. And so when I got sick, my number one thing was is that, man, I, I remember very vividly, Bill, that I asked God, just let me – be around long enough to see her graduate high school. She'll be an adult. She's gone. I know she'll be okay. And I still upset my wife when I tell her sometimes, I say, you know, God has a legend. He'll go back and say, hey, Jonathan should have been gone here a long time ago. Said, Let me come grab him. That was my, that was my focus. I wanted to, to be around for her as long as I could. And like you said, you grab a hold of something. That's why I grabbed a hold. I wanted to be here, of course, to enjoy life and um, be with my wife, and, and but, but my daughter was my main thing there. I wanted to be able to see her grow up, and I've accomplished that so far, and that, that's an awesome thing there. Well, I want to jump in, and I hear what you're saying. In other words, well, hey, I lived a good life. Lord, whatever you have, I'm good. But I'm sitting here saying there's going to be another 22. Let's go for another 22, you know, and, <laughs> and, 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 and this advocacy. There was one time that when I was working and things before I retired, I got with a group. They were on Colorado Boulevard, and it had something to do with um, organs. And they were flying like uh, it was a hub here in Colorado where they would fly organs around. Yes. And when I started sticking my nose into that, I found out that for blacks, it's a whole nother ratio or something different as far as getting organs. Do you have any idea that you could share to why that might be? Well, it would be my personal opinion, opinion Bill, but it's like everything else, man. It's, it's, it's like, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And a lot of these things, you know, we've wondered about. I've heard stories too. Um, like I said, I've been a strong advocate, but I've heard stories about. Um, Black folks that have been waiting and waiting, and they see somebody uh, of a different ethnicity go right in and get a kidney. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's no rhyme or reason to it, and I can't explain it to you, but I know they're trying to get better about that. Okay. Well, then, what is your personal? <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, uh, like I said, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And, uh, we're not, sometimes we're not the right com complexion for the connection. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying, my brother. And I'm glad you said that. So that our community yes. can understand that if you are losing someone or donating organs after death, or if you feel you might could help someone, to just understand that our people might need this. And if you're in a position to where you might could help someone, Maybe instead of just donating it, maybe is there a way like you can donate to uh, the people that may not be as connected, if you know what I mean? 
Um, but Donate Life Colorado specifically is who I started off with. I'm no longer with them now because I was very fortunate to get with another organization. But Donate Life to Colorado is a strictly volunteer. Okay. Um, and we would go out and, and speak to different people and, and try to explain them about the donation process. And that was one of the things that I, you know, I found out I was very active with them because talk about a good group of people. When you talk about a good group of people that are totally um, focused on what they want to do, most of the people there in Donate Life haven't received an organ. Most of them have, had, have been impacted by the loss of a family member. I think of one lady in particular, Bill, who she lost her daughter in a bad car wreck on her graduation night. Wow. And she just, man, beautiful lady, just totally active in the, in the whole thing. And her daughter's heart was given to a, uh, another girl. And those families connected. And now they're like one family. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. I know that for a fact the people that donate by the Colorado are working hard on disputing those type of situations that come up. We want to make sure that the people that are next in line get the kidney. Now, there is one aspect you have to remember. If you're really close to death, they try to move, that list try to move you up to get you a kidney. But a lot of times, you know, when you're about to die, there's other things come up. You might have a bad heart. You might have bad lungs. And those things have to be dealt with before you, you know, they, like I said, they don't want to put a, a good kidney in someone that has other issues. I can really understand that. And like you said, I think it was, was that Roger Mayers or something? The football player, that baseball player that got a kidney or a liver, and he was an alcoholic and everything. But they went on and gave him one anyway. That won't happen now. That, 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 that doesn't happen no more. Not, not now. No, no, no. Once you're, you know, you have to have things that are squared away. You know, like most um, alcohol, and I don't want to speak out of line, but most people that have, have alcohol problems, they have they have C, and um, you know, now they've got a, a, a cure for C. I myself even told them if I don't my, my living donor doesn't work, I would accept the hip C kidney because they've got they got a cure for it and they would treat those kidneys now they're there's so many kidneys they have now uh, uh Bill that you know before they would rule them out. Um and now you're they, they could be eligible. They go through a rigorous testing before they would put that kidney in you. Okay. I also remember one time, sir, I believe you were on a poster. Can you tell us a little bit about how you ended up on the poster? in the well, center as a matter of fact <laughs> i think you're, you're talking about there were two posters i were on bill one um was the one that should be in front of you there was myself and four other people yes and that one was a, a bad campaign that they did and um they said we needed somebody to do they couldn't find anybody with uh that was diabetic and me you know, I am, you know, and they said, well, I'll, I'll do it, but I'm not diabetic, but I'll do it. So if you read by there on the poster, it says, I'm diabetic, something to the fact that I didn't, but I didn't know I could still donate. And that was letting people know that even though you're a diabetic, you could still possibly be a donor. You have to be tested. That's why I told you about everything. Don't rule yourself out. Um, no matter what, if you're trying to donate, let them tell you that it doesn't work out because you'd be surprised when people that have donated and they didn't know that they were going to be able to donate. Actually, a, a, a girl that works with me in Donate Life should be in a picture of me on the front because I, I told her, I said, I'm looking for it. I never can see it. And there it was. Most of the people will remember that know me. Um, I was on the side of RTD bus. They did a, an ad campaign. And That's it was, what I uh, saw you. Yeah. They did that, and then they did a motor vehicle department. Okay. So I would get a call from somebody would say, man, I just saw you on the bus. And I said, man, you ain't seen me. I don't ride the bus. And they said, no, man, I saw you on the side of the bus, the ad campaign. So before I even knew it, it hit. I got two calls. One was from Rudy Carey. Hey, Bubba Rudy. Called me. Yeah, Bubba called me, and he said, man, I seen you on the bus. I said, you a lie. You know you ain't seen me on no bus. <laughs> and then my cousin Tim called me, and he rides the bus. and said, man, you're on the inside of the bus. So they put it out there everywhere. And then another white guy that I that I knew from school called me and said, "Hey man, I, I saw you a motor vehicle. Man, they got a big post of your motor vehicle." So, hey man, that's not busy, and that's um, I was I'm very proud of that um, because there, there's another example of me and you talking about how they could have selected any white person to do that. There's uh, myself and 
Well, there's Bobby and there's two white gentlemen there. And that was at a symposium up in New York about kidney donation. Now, what happened up in New York? There's a symposium. Every year they have a big symposium. They invite people from all around the country who are advocates to come up there and, and share their stories. And, and um, it's three days of, of pretty intense uh, um, promotion of organ donation. So, uh, so you, Bobby, and these other two gentlemen were up in New York. Yeah, we were selected for that, and um, we just, uh, we all hit it off, we were good, and we all just, just they asked us if they could take a picture of us, and, and we did. And uh, that's one of my favorite pictures, because it was all of us from different parts of the country. The two guys, one guy is from uh, North Carolina, and the other guy is from Sacramento, California. There's a girl that she lives up in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, she's been paired with me, and Bill... Her name is Bobby, and she actually gave a kidney to a stranger. And her and I have, have been paired uh, in certain situations where we do presentations. And because I'm a recipient and she's a donor, but man, talk, talk about, I mean, she donated a kidney, and I, I can't speak too much for her, but she donated a kidney to a, to a Filipino lady. And um, like it with everything, man, uh, the families now are connected. When her, her donor's daughter got married, they, they flew Bobby to the, over to the Philippines for the wedding and everything, man. It, it comes up to be beautiful things that happen. Every year, we have what is called a donor dash. Can you explain to me a little more about donor dash? Okay, the donor dash is a 5K run that the, the Donate Life um, does every year. It's at Washington Park. It's a big okay. deal. It started off with like three or four hundred people, and most of those were people that, you know, either a family member um, was that, uh, impacted by do or organ uh, donation or reception. And now there's uh, five, six thousand people, Bill, that do this every year. It's That's huge. a lot of people. It's huge. It's huge. And this guy here was brought on board um, kind of like, you know, Rocky from the Nuggets. Yeah. Yeah, that's what his job is, is to provoke donor. Yes, and he does a hell of a job. This is getting deep. <laughs> this is not, we haven't touched the tip of the iceberg. A lot of people know Archie Jones. He was an advocate long before I was, and he took me under his wing. And Archie Jones actually had a television program, ETAC, Black Transplant Action Committee. That's what he, he founded. He ran a little television show, it was on Channel 6, and that's how I found it. And okay. he took me under his wing. Archie passed away about, about seven years ago. But he had had three transplants, and uh, Archie was a good friend, real good friend, strong ever. Three? Three. Different, same organ? No, three, three kidney transplants. Three kidneys. Those are the two girls that actually were the... Uh, the two main people as far as uh, uh, coordinating the uh, volunteers. And uh, we took a picture, and I still keep in touch with all of them. Oh, man, I, I'm telling you, Bill, one of the good things about this is I wish we had more black folks that were involved, that wanted to get involved, and it started to come around. It started to pick up, okay? But um, I've made so many what I call friends. And I don't have a lot of friends. I'm sure I know you don't what need you mean. We got a lot of people we know, but not friends. Right. Those two ladies, that, that right particularly in there, I can call them right now and tell them I needed something that was possible, you know, possibly they would do it. I mean, just lovely ladies, volunteers. Now, both of them had moved in from volunteer positions to paid positions, but that's what I've done too. So it, it's a good thing. And my wife, when, when I first got offered what I do now, I said, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be paid for this. And she said, you paid your dues. I mean, why why shouldn't you be paid for you know helping promote? Right. And I, I did take that to heart, and I did that. Mr. Johnson, I I know that time permits, but I I will probably be calling you, and then we can maybe get into more how we can educate public, you know, about these transplants and how they work, if you don't mind. I would be more than willing, Bill. You know that. Okay, my brother. I really do. Thank you. 
Lord, my brother, I really am going to be praying with you and for you and your family. And I just really thank you for taking time here. Um, I do have one little question that's totally off the subject. If you could answer for me, please. I just wanted to know, Steve Johnson, out of all this information that you have, why do you end up in FB jail so much? <laughs> I just want to know. <laughs> That's funny, Bill. It's because, of, uh, uh, because with me, what you see is what you get. Okay. And I have a hard time controlling my mouth, or should I say my fingers on the, on the keyboard, okay? Okay. Uh, but I'm not going to let Facebook run me off. You know, I've just learned now how to well, what do we used to say, hey, Bill? You have to uh, pick your shots? Right, right. That's what I do now. I pick my shots. But uh, that's funny, buddy, but I appreciate that. <laughs> I'd be watching you, my brother. And I thank you so much for taking this time. Before we go, is there anything for anyone that might be in a situation like yourself? Is there something that you would like to leave with the audience? Yes, I would like, uh, especially for our African Americans, and that's the, what's the strongest uh, point of your of your your uh, people that watch your program. Um, get involved, get involved, because it's really true about educating yourself, especially about donation, um, and not so much you know, not only just living donation, but Bill, a family member of yours passes away, most likely someone from Donate Life Colorado is going to come to them and ask them about the possibility of of donating their organs and I don't want you to be shocked by that a lot of people I've been in situations where they got pretty upset about it so what are you doing here now well that's why, why you know I, I know in your driver's license you probably have a heart on there where you've indicated that your organs do want them to go uh, um, that's one of the ad campaigns that we did uh, years ago and it's been very successful but still people don't know and still people when it gets down to nitty gritty they're not really sure if their organs, they want their organs, their, their family member organs to, to go like that. Um, my attitude on that has always been, you can't take them with you. That's really, that's the bottom line. And I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but if you educate yourself on a deal, you'll see that it's a, it's a beautiful thing to do. Well, I thank you, Mr. Johnson, for answering the call and taking this time. And hopefully you'll stay out of Facebook <laughs> jail and all of that kind of stuff. Thank you for the information that you have given us. And I know a couple of people that are living now where they had to get kidneys, you know, to them. And my brother, I mean this in all sincerity. I will be praying for you and your family. Well, like I said earlier, Mr. Bill Parsons, I appreciate you. Keep doing what you're doing. And at any time, any place I can help you, you got my number. You give me a call. Hey, thank you, my brother. You right, have man. a great day. You too. Take care. Okay. Well, another episode of Where Were You? And we would like to thank our guests for this evening. Also want to thank New Me. New Me helps sponsor Where Were You? So go on and check it out. New Me forward slash Arcway. Also, go on and hit that like. Go on and hit subscribe. Go on and hit that share. Go on and leave a comment. And if you find anyone that has a story, let me know. And hey, you bless someone today.